Okay. So let's begin with uh, simple problems. Those are from uh, from previous maths maths cons kind of done. Okay. The first problem uh, I want to discuss is the following. So let's understand the, the powers. Okay. So two to the x times two to the thirty times four to the x equals sixty four to the x. Now what is what is x? The value of x. Okay. So we have uh, yeah. So first of all, let's understand what is x. Uh, what is sixty four? Right, sixty four. You know, it's thirty two times two, and it's just right. So we know that two, uh, two. Let's begin with two cubed. Two cubed is eight. Two to the fourth power is sixteen. Two to the fifth is going to be thirty two, and two to the sixth is going to be sixty four. Okay. So the best, uh, the best way to solve this problem is I express uh, both sides. Uh, in terms of two to the certain power, okay? So two to the x is already there, it's simple. And we know four is two square, so the left hand side is two to the x times 230 times four to the x is gonna be two to the x, right? Times two to 30 times two square and to the power x. And we know that we can combine them into one, um, one, one term, which is two to the certain uh, uh, power. Okay, clearly it's going to be two x plus x. It's a three x plus thirty, right? How do you do that, right? We use a formula: two squared to the power x is going to be two to the two x. Okay, then you add all the powers together. You have three x on the top plus thirty. The left hand side is going to be two to the six and the power, and then you just needed to multiply this out. So then both sides are equal means, you see, two to the 30, uh, three x plus 30 equal two to the six x, right? Both sides are equal if and only if uh, three x plus 30 equals six x. Then you get a linear equation, then you solve the problem, okay? So, so that would be 30 equals 3x, then x equals 10. Okay. Now, what kind of formula we're using here? We are using the following basic formulas. If you have a 2 to the x to the y, then this is just the product of the two numbers. Okay. Another formula we're using is 2 to the x times 2 to the y uh, is going to be 2 to the x plus y. Okay. Those are the basic formulas for, for the power, uh, for the exponential function, okay? Uh, yeah, so x is not necessary to be an integer here even, but this, but x can be even fractions later on we see that. So this is a, but we can define two to the any number, okay? Not necessary to be integer can be fraction, uh, can be negative number, can be real number, okay? But those are the formulas we, sh we, should, uh, we should know, okay? So that's the first problem. And uh, let's look at the similar problems. Uh, this is about, uh, the second problem is, uh, Okay, so we try, yeah, uh, for what positive integer n, okay, does the following hold? n to the power n, okay? So please, uh, please do that, try to simplify, and to see if we are able to figure out what is it, okay? Okay. 
right, I'll give you a minute. <clears throat> You have to find a way to simplify them, express that some number to the same number, okay? Like a three to a three, three, three cube, or maybe four to the fourth power, okay, then. Okay, there are basic formulas you have to use it, right? Okay, are you done with that? Nobody gave me an answer? We still use the above formulas. So those are the formulas. You know, two can be replaced by any numbers, okay? Three or four, okay? So those are the formulas. So let's simplify it first. I cannot, don't, don't multiply this up, okay? Three square minus one is gonna be nine minus one is eight. But we're not gonna do that. If we take the common factor out, three to the 18, okay? Then this will be three square minus one. Can you see that? Because 20 is 18 plus two. So 18 plus two, you know, that's why you have the common factor, three to 18. So now you can sit up, right? So you only get three to 18. Now question is how can I uh, uh, change it to uh, n to the power n? So let's step by, do step by step. That'd be three squared, right? n times nine, right? Two times nine is 18. We're using about formula. But then three squared is nine. So nine to the nine. Okay, clearly n should be equal to nine. Okay, got it? Yeah, right? Because we, we have to express it to n to the power n. Now you get nine to the power nine. Good, right? So we use this examples to familiar with uh, the formulas, okay? So the next one is for what value of x does five to the x equals six hundred uh, one over six hundred twenty-five? Okay. Okay. Please do this problem. Okay. Right. Similar. There are, there are certain number of problems like that, you know, you have to, you have to familiar with this. Okay, so somebody give me an answer. X equals four, Kevin says negative four or four. Last thing gave me the answer, negative four. All right, so first of all, let's see, what is six, six, uh, six and 25? I know five squared is 25, right? Five cubed is gonna be 125, then five to the fourth power is 625. So five to the six, right? So we have to use the following fact. We turn this upside down, right? Right? But that one should be able to read, uh, can be written in the form. Uh, yeah, this is again to be written in the form five to the negative four, okay? So that's why uh, X should be equal to negative four. So when, when we have a negative number, okay? Then what's the definition, right? This, we use a definition. The definition here is uh, uh, any number to the negative power that's called the x, okay? Is actually is one over a to the x. So that's the definition. Okay, x is positive number. Okay, so uh, so uh, so two to the negative two, it literally means two square. One over two square is one over four. Okay, got it? Yeah, that's just a notation. If a negative power, you can put in the denominator, change it to the positive power, then you evaluate. 
Right, great. So now uh, we are going to still look, look like we're going to dealing with the powers, but uh, 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 exponential function, but actually those are the factors, right? So let's look at uh, the following problem. All right, so here's a question. If two to the power n is a factor of 3,384, what is uh, the greatest possible uh, uh, integer value of n. All right, so maybe two is a factor, maybe two, two squared is a factor, but what is the largest possible value for n you can get? Okay. Yes, but you don't have brain calculator? Yeah. You can use calculator to work on it. So if it's an even number, right? 3384, uh, 3, it's an even number. So the question you can divide by two. But I think you should divide by four first quickly. Why? Because 3300 is divisible by four. 84 is divisible by four. Okay? So that would be a quick way. Together, right? So, you, so you divide by uh, four, okay? Then, then it will be four times eight hundred sixty-four. Then this is even number. You divide by by two. I think you can only divide by two, and then divide by two, you get get four hundred twenty-three. Now, four hundred twenty-three is not a. It's going to be an other number. It's not divisible by two. So no more factor of two you can get. That's it. Okay? So so be two cubed times four hundred and twenty-three. So uh, n should be equal to three. Okay. This is about factors. Okay. <laughs> Okay, right? All right, so uh, do I have another one about factors? Let me check. No. Yeah, so here's another fact problem. All right, we see that what is the least uh, integer n such that 10 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, all the way to n factorial is not an integer. It's just a fraction. Okay, so to do this problem, what is list n? Okay, you can try one by one. The problem if you try one by one, you never uh, yeah take much longer time. But at least you see that one is right, and you know when if n equals one, it's integer. When n equals two, you know it yeah it is going to be let's call it the n right. Let's call it x. So x is going to be what? It's ten factorial. It's integer. N equals two. X equal 10 factorial divided by 2 factorial. It's also integer, okay? Because 2 factorial is just 2. So it's going to be 2 times 3 all the way to 10 divided by 2 canceled out. It's going to be integer, right? But you cannot probably try to do that step by step. 
Okay, so it's going to be uh, three times all the ten. It's integer. Uh, definitely, n cannot be larger than ten. Okay. Okay. Why? Because when n is eleven factorial, then there is a factor eleven in the denominator it cannot be cancelled out. Okay. So clearly, n is smaller than or equal to 10. But even if it's 10, it's in, it is a fraction, right? 10 factorial over 10 factorial. So you, you begin with uh, from the top, okay? So clearly, n is going to be, n cannot be, uh, n must be less than or equal to 9, okay? Because when n is, uh, is 10 factorial, then 10 factorial cancel out. The denominator is numerator, denominator is going to be one factor, two factor, all the way to nine factorial. So, so question is if it's nine factorial, whether, whether you can get an integer. But if it's nine factorial, you can quickly see it cannot be the integer, okay? N equals nine, it's impossible. There's a quick way to do that. This is nine factorial, right? 10 factorial, you see that? The y 10 factorial is 9 factorial times 10. Okay? And here's 1 factorial, 2 factorial, all the way to 8 factorial. Now 9 factorial cancelled out. But this cannot be integer. Why? It contains a factor of 3, the denominator. But 10 does not contain factor of 3. So it's not an integer. Yeah, you can quickly check that. It's not going to be integer. The reason is three factorial or six factorial cause you trouble. Okay, this contains factor of three. Okay, so n equals eight, the same. Then you get a nine, then equals, then equals nine and, uh, and uh, then equals nine and the 10, and here eight, you know, n equals eight, right? So eight factorial uh, is gone, so it's one, Factor two factorial all the way to seven factorial, okay. And uh, so, so from here, I think seven factorial still contains fact seven. So that's why you are not able to. Yeah, so you're not you can, you can get rid of eight factorial, but you're not able to get rid of a seven. Okay, so n equals seven, then you have a problem here, it's eight times nine times 10, then one factor all the way to seven factor is gone. That depends how many threes you can get. Okay, but this is a little bit challenging whether this is going to be the integer or not. Okay, so you have to be very careful to check. Okay, okay so it's a, it's a five factor and four factor, and uh, uh, three factoria, right? Okay, three factoria, six factoria contains two six, two threes, okay? And uh, five factoria, you see that there is a two fives in the denominator. So you're not able to get rid of a five, okay? There is only one five in the numerator, but there's two fives in the denominator, okay? So this causes you trouble, five, five. I cannot on the phone, I'm teaching. Okay. So, so n equals six, then that works, okay? n equals six, n equals six, that works, okay? So you can check that. All right, so if it's a six, it's an integer. Why? So this is going to be seven, eight, nine, ten. It's one factor, two factor, three factor, four factor, five factor, six is gone. And you can carefully, you can check all term can be canceled out. Okay, this is a, let's see, 
two, two times three, two times three times four, and two times three times four times five. Okay, and here's seven, eight, nine, two times five. Okay, so five five cancelled out. How many twos you need? Uh, let's see. I'm not sure it's working on that. Okay. Uh, no, six is still not an integer. Okay. It's not a, still it's not an integer. Uh, then you can see that uh, seven is okay, right? How many twos there? You can two to the fourth power. Okay. But you hear one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, lots of two there. You can cancel out. Okay. So finally, uh, that works. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then you have a you have a one. Um, uh, this if you multiply out, okay, then that works. Okay, so this is a this is a this is a uh, this is a is an integer. Okay, so the smallest uh, n such as that. Uh, this is not going to be integer, is actually six. Okay, the answer is six. Okay, smallest ones, the rest of them will be an integer. Okay, uh, yeah, it's a little bit complicated, but you have to quickly check whether you can cancel all the factors in the denominator. Okay, all the factors in the denominator. Okay, so here are three where we canceled out, you have three here, and nine. Right, you have a two three in the numerate, that's only one three, and you have one, two, three, four, five. Right, how many twos you have? Right, and you have five twos, but numerate you have a three, yeah, all the twos canceled out. So this is the integer. Okay, so the answer is the answer is n is six. Okay, this is a a, a little bit complicated problems. All right, uh, well, uh, the next one I want to discuss uh, is about, um, yeah, still the similar type of problem, what is the least number, right? So here's how do you do quickly. What is the least positive integer k integer k uh, integer k such that 2 to the k is greater than 8 minus k uh, k squared So what is the least positive integer such that this inequality holds? Now let's understand the least positive integer. Okay. Positive integer, if you put a one there, it does not hold, right? So when k equals one, two to the one is less than eight minus one squared. But on the other hand, you see that the left hand side is increasing, okay? So two to the power k is increasing as k increases, but eight minus k squared decreasing. One side is increasing, other side is decreasing. Eventually, the, the, this inequality will, will be reversed, okay? So this is that's one, okay. So eventually, this inequality will be reversed because this side, look at, right? Two to the k, we begin with, we begin with, uh, uh, yeah, sorry. We begin with, uh, the, uh, yeah, you compare both sides. You compare, right? This side is increasing, this side is decreasing. So eventually, you will, uh, eventually this inequality will be breaking, okay? Okay, eventually the left hand side will be greater than the right hand side. Okay, so you check 
So you just need to go ahead and quickly check that. When k equals two, two square is still less than eight minus two square. Uh, yes, this is actually the equality already, right? So when k equals three, two cube is greater than eight minus, uh, minus uh, three square, okay? So to answer the question, the least positive integer k should be this is the answer, okay? This is the answer, okay? So after, the, after that, this you always have true because one side is going up and the other is going down. So after that, uh, this, this is always true, okay? Then for, for any k greater than, uh, greater than equals three, two to the power k is greater than eight minus k squared. Okay, so the smallest integer such as, such as this in called hold is going to be three. Okay, there is another type of problems uh, we, we need to uh, study. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at it. All right, so the next problem, uh, this is another type of problem, this is similar. What is the uh, smallest positive integer n for which uh, n, n square over three over four is an integer, okay? So you want to determine the value so that this is a integer. Of course, when uh, has this n square over three divided by four, if they simplify it, it's gonna be three times four, okay? This is gonna be integer, but in general, it's not an integer. When n is one, it's not an integer. n is two, it's not an integer, okay? Okay, when n is three, is not going to be integer. So, but after, after, uh, 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 yeah, the, what is the smallest n which makes this to be integer? Four square is not going to be integer. Okay. So this n must be divisible by three. This n must be divisible by three divisible by, and n must be divisible by two. So clearly n should be equal to six. Okay? If n is less than six, this is not going to be integer. Okay? So clearly n should be, is divisible by by three, contains factor three. And square contains factor three, and n must contain factor three. And, and the two, okay? Not four, because four is two square. So that's the reason uh, n is divisible by six. The smallest positive integer n is going to be six, okay? It's going to be six. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you to do work on the problem. Okay. And let me give you the problem. This is about the factors, okay? Speaking of factors. So here's a question. What is the least positive integer was at least three distinct non-factors? 
right? You have to have a three prime factors. What kind of smallest number you can get? That's easy, right? Sorry. Yeah, prime factors, prime number, right? Primes of as small as possible, three, two, three, five, seven, blah, 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 right? So you have to pick up the smallest prime numbers. You have to pick up three different ones. So the product, two times three times five, is gonna be 30, that's the answer. That's it, all right? Now, what is else? So remember, we, we, we have the notation called, yeah, for example, uh, what is the notation? 0 0.k, a, a k is a digit, okay? K, uh, k is, a, is, a, is a digit, okay? So this notation means 0 0.k, k, 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 and k, digit. Right? Okay, repeating. You can also have a two or three. Now in mathematics, we can prove that in the, in the advanced math class, we actually can prove that this is gonna be K over nine. Okay, it's a fraction, can be expressed as a fraction. Okay, this is actually, can be turned into a fraction. So it's, it's a rational number, repeating, okay? If we have a KL, two digits, it was zero point K L K L K L and this is gonna be K L of a ninety-nine. Okay, so it can be expressed as a fraction. Okay, for example, zero point three three, right? So what they do that zero point three. Yeah, this notation is nothing. But this is gonna be one third. But if it one divided by three, you get zero point three 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 three. Okay, it's a fraction. All right. So uh, so now we can All right, so we, uh, let's see, All right? So here's a question. If X equals 0 0.4, right? Yeah. What is uh, the value of X expressed uh, as a common Fraction. Okay, right, please do this. Try to simplify. Okay.
Right, so 11 over 5, 11, uh, 5 over 11, yes. So x is going to be 4, 5 over 99. Then you have to simplify, right? 4 times 9, 11 times, yeah, 5 times 9, 11 times 9. So after you simplify, it's 5 times, 5, uh, 5 over 11. All right, so now uh, I'm trying to find another problem. All right, so here's another problem. If 0 0.4 times n equals 12, what is n? That's a quick problem, right? And then I'm going to ask you to work on another one. Okay, what is n? So, to, so this is just the equation, right? If 0 0.4 can be written about, it can be written as 4 over 9 times n equals 12, right? Then then that implies uh, n equals uh, 9 over 4 times 12, and then 27. Okay, got it. All right, so next question is, for how many uh, integer, integers n is 2 less n squared less than 20? Okay, yeah, we have a couple of uh, inequalities to deal with. All right, so you just need to get to the lowest bound for n, right? Two is greater than, yeah, two is less than n squared. Now clearly, uh, you can also express the square, you know, this clearly, imp it implies n is greater than one, okay? n cannot be, if n is two, it's already greater than, and two squared is greater than two, okay? But then n squared less than 20, so this implies n cannot be five, right? N is less than five, can, but n can be four. So you have n equals two, three, four, right? So that the answer is three, okay? So this is a, okay, this is not a, a complicated problem about counting. Okay, the next one is a little bit uh, complicated. So what is, the mean of all the positive three digit multiples of seven. Okay. Yeah, please do this.
<sighs> what is the meaning of the all positive three digit multiples? Okay, first of all, it's a three digit numbers, which is multiple of seven, okay? Anyone have answers? <laughs> so mean, what is a mean? You have to add all the numbers together. But you have to find a way to express this numbers, multiple of seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do this problem, okay? So multiple seven must be in, written in this form, okay? right? And, uh, and does, you know, you, you get smallest one, largest one, but that's not solve the problem, okay? So this is gonna be less than or equal to 99, 999 greater than or equal to 100. So let's figure out the possible value for P, okay? You solve this in Cordy, Okay, greater than 100 over seven. Uh, I'm going to use the calculator, okay? So 999 divided by seven, so it's about 142.7. And this is going to be 100 divided by seven, 14.28. So P, the value for the P should be start from 15. 16 all the way to 142. Okay, question is how many of such P there total, right? Total number of this P is 142. Okay. Uh, yeah, 142 minus 14. I think they are total, uh, total number. Uh, 128 such numbers, as okay, this is 128 such number. Okay, from 4, 15 to 142. I need that because I want to find the mean, okay? So the mean, okay, the mean is going to be, right, the sum of all such numbers. 
the mean, okay, is going to be seven times, uh, seven times fifteen plus seven times sixteen plus seven times one hundred forty-two, okay, divided by one hundred twenty-eight. That's the mean, okay. But you can still can, uh, uh, you can figure out how to do that, okay. How to get them just numbers together. You have a fact of seven, you can take it out. 15 plus 16, all the way to 142, right? So how to add all those numbers together, you know, okay? The idea is as so, follows. So 15 plus 16, all the way to 142. You double it, okay? You reverse the order, add them together, right? So this side is a seven, six, 167, okay? So each term is 167, 167. Add them together is 167 times 128. But you only have a one row, then just divide by, just divide by two, okay? So the answer here is seven times 167 times 128 divided by two, okay? Well, so actually 128 canceled out, right? So the answer here is going to be, the mean is seven times 167. Okay, that's the, that's the mean, okay? Yeah, okay. So remember, how do we add them, add, how to calculate the sum of the numbers, con, uh, consecutive numbers, right? So you can begin with any of the numbers, right? So here's a question. What is the sum of, of these numbers? For example, I begin with the 13 plus 14 plus, six, uh, plus 15, right? All the way to 97. Can you do that? Jasper? Anyone can solve the problem? David? <laughs> First of all, you have to figure out how many terms there, okay, you need. Then you apply the tricks I just showed to you. Okay, uh, you got it, 4,620, 4, okay. So the idea is, uh, first of all, you count how many terms. So you have to do the subtraction, okay. This subtraction gives you 
AD, uh, five, the so AD five terms. Okay. Then the reason I needed the, I needed this number. Then then I reverse the order. Okay. So fourteen and so on, all the way to ninety-seven. I add them together. I do this such addition. Right. Each time I got zero here and one, yeah, 110, 110. And the 110, they're all the same. But how many of them are 110? It's going to be 85, 85 terms, okay? So double of the sum is going to be 110 times 85. So that's why single row, should be 110 times 85 divided by two, okay? It'll be 55 times 85. Then you can multiply this up, okay? So this is a way we, uh, we solve this. Then you can, uh, yeah, then you can solve the previous problem, you know, how many, what is, um, what is, uh, yeah, what is the mean of, three digit numbers which is a part multiple of seven okay okay so my uh my next uh topic is about uh yeah let's see what what is missing here Okay, the next one is about counting for how many positive four digit integers is the sum of, of the digits equal to three. Okay, so you are talking about four digit integers, okay, and we want to count them. What do we have here? The sum of the digits is going to be three. Okay. Now, how to reduce, simplify this? First of all, be careful. Digits can be zero, right? So all the way to nine. But the first digit, cannot be zero, okay? So what is the possible value for A? The possible value for A could be one, could be two, could be three. The three, three classes. So we can simplify the equation a little bit, divide them into three cases, okay? Case one, A equals one. In that case, the equation becomes, uh, become this, okay? And this probably is the most uh, uh, complicated problems. So you have to count this, okay? And then the second case is A equals two. Okay, A equals two, then B plus C plus D equals, equals one. Then that's not many choices, okay? It's easy to solve this case. Let's figure out this first. Because the difficult part is A equals one. Okay, now when, a equals two, B, you see A, B, C, D are in digits, but only one can be one, only one of them can be one, right? It could be one, zero, zero, right? It could be zero, one, zero, it can be zero, zero, one. So there are three, three, uh, uh, three actually, three, four digit integers with that property, okay, begin with two, okay? So, yeah, so 2000, 2100, 2010, 2001, okay. So the case, case three, A equals three, in this case, there's only one solution because the sum 
is going to be zero. So the only possible solution is going to be zero, zero, zero. And here, B, C, D is going to be one of these three, right? So the difficult part here is to how to deal with the first case. How many four digit integers begin with what? All right. So can you can you can you figure it out? Okay, question how many here? Okay. So let's do this problem to save space. So this case one also should be divided into uh, several cases because uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise you're probably missing some terms, okay? So you can say uh, B equals, you know, if one of them is two or two of them is, you see, it cannot have both of them uh, has a non-zero value. If you don't want the list of them, this it be okay, right? So you can uh, you can see one of them is two, then be two zero 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 two zero 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 two, right? If one of the digits is then two, then all the other digits must be zero. Now, if one of the digits is one, then then the other one must be. Uh, must be uh, when uh, the third one must be zero. So the question is how many patterns you're going to have, right? You're also going to have a three patterns, right? So this could be a one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, okay? And that's it, okay? If one of the digits is one, then then the second case, total, as you can see that, three, 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 and plus one, it's 10. There are 10 such integers. Answer. Ten. Okay. So it's going to be three plus three plus three plus one. Okay. All right. So this is, that's it. You know, we, we, uh, you can do a similar problems like uh, how many triples, uh, how many triples there are, the sum of them uh, is going to be, yeah, the similar question you can try at home is how many uh, uh, triples there are, A, B, C. First of all, um, where, uh, where A, B, C are integers, Okay, positive integers, the sum, okay, the first condition, uh, yeah, the first condition is A, B, C are positive integers, okay? The second condition is A plus B plus C uh, is gonna be, uh, is gonna be 10, okay? How about this? Okay, if you have time and work on this problem when you get home, so the class, uh, class is over, okay?